Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Yalem Abagaz with my colleague, Dr. Kiran Dunn. The topic of our presentation is designing microcurricula as a service, the case of large class, cross program, and online asynchronous module. Just to give you a bit of background, DCU Futures is an HCI funded project which aims at reimagining undergraduate education, focusing on transversal skills. UNESCO defined transversal skills as skills that are not specifically related to a particular job, task, academic discipline, or area of knowledge, and that can be used in a wide variety of situations and working settings. So data literacy and analytics is identified as one of the core transversal skills by DCU Futures and it is designed to be delivered to 10 DCU Futures programs. And as part of the skill set, 14 data literacy and analytics topics are identified, as you can see them in this diagram, and they can be delivered uh, as a five credit standalone module, or they can be embedded into other modules as small topics of a bigger module. And the requirement is to design this module. And the main challenge that we have is as follows. How can we design a curriculum that will be delivered to multidisciplinary programs, which can be independent, composable, and embedded into other modules with all the characteristics of a standard curriculum. And after having explored several options, we applied the concept of microcurriculum as a service, what we call MAS. And MAS treats a given curriculum as a service and focuses on the development of a curriculum into a very small sized, full fledged, and independent curriculum called microcurriculum. And MAS can be designed, deployed, and delivered in different uh, configurations. First, as an independent microcurriculum, uh, each topic can be delivered as an independent microcurriculum. And second, these microcurricula can be combined to make uh, a bigger credit module. And third, by embedding one or more of these microcurricula into other modules. By applying this approach, we developed the new data literacy and analytics module, CA179, and it is delivered as a standalone five credit module for two DCU Futures programs. And it is embedded into 34 other DCU undergraduate modules for the rest of uh, the DCU Futures programs. And in the 2022-2023 academic year, it is delivered to 800 students in semester one and semester two. So compared to the traditional approach, MAS is very scalable. It is flexible and it can be delivered independently and it is composable. It can be embedded into existing standard modules and it is very economical. This is uh, our presentation. And if you have any question, please contact us with the details below. Hello there. My name is Dr. Uzma Ahmed and I'm working in University of Sheffield International College. My empirical paper, as you can see on screen here is about investigating the link between student online engagement and their academic performance or score in large classroom during the COVID-19 pandemic. And essentially, this is the quantitative case study of one of the economics module at University of Sheffield International College at level six that I am teaching. And my reflection on experiences of teaching online and large classes during the pandemic. Also, it is about some adaptions we have made to teaching 
and pedagogical approaches online that are typically suited to face-to-face -face classes. Building on my own professional background, I am lecturer and module coordinator in economics at University of Sheffield College for the past many years and found myself trying to adapt my existing practices to engage students in large classes and also picking up new approaches to student engagement. The other side of this, of course, that some of the changes to teaching approaches have been quite unexpected and quite rapid for educators, as many of us will have experienced during the COVID-19 restrictions. It is this experience that raised some unexpected points of reflection and an opportunity to read around this area. The data for this study comes from 282 students using Google survey and then the data set is matched with their uh, end of module score. In this study, online engagement is measured through various tools such as self-reported engagement with module, their engagement with formative assessment, like progress test, use of online discussion board, and students' attendance in live teaching sessions. The findings of the study show a positive and significant relationship between online engagement and student performance. These results have several implications. With the efficient and effective use of online discussion board, student engagement can be enhanced and that increases the quality of student education outcomes. This has obvious implication for higher education sector contributing to local institution and sector-wide debate on student engagement and performance. Additionally, this policy is easy to follow as almost all universities nowadays are using virtual learning environment uh, for teaching and learning and using online discussion boards have no extra cost for education providers. Another implication is that the educator can use formative assessment as a tool effectively to increase student engagement leading to a positive effect on student performance in a particular module. So they are main points of learning. Thank you very much to Murray and Anna for their support. And thank you very much for listening. My name is Hyo Won from DCU. And my co-author is Naili. She was a teaching assistant for classes reported here. Before joining DCU three years ago, I was a lecturer in a university in Singapore called SUTD. The main pedagogy of the university was active learning, impacting their whole curriculum. Some photos from my own classes from that time. The infrastructure of the university support active learning in an effective way, including tables and chairs and whiteboards or rollable to allow easy reconfiguration of activities during class hours. So instead of having a large number of students in a classroom, they will divide into multiple classrooms. And in each classroom, maximum number is 45. And there were two or three lecturers actually uh, co-teaching in each classroom to support the better uh, activities in the class. Whereas in the large classes in DCU, um, I was the only lecturer and I had a teaching assistant. So two of us had to deal with a number of students. In terms of the class hour, uh, instead of having a solid one hour lecture, usually the duration was a two hours with uh, multiple activities happening in the class. So in order to support this one well, student has to do pre-class reading beforehand. Sometimes there were three activities in two hour duration or sometimes the duration was an hour and a half and a couple of activities happened there. So when I joined the DCU, um, I was assigned to a large classrooms had to happen in um, lecture halls. So what I did was to make a list of active learning tools that I learned and I am very familiar with, and I tried to apply them in the large classrooms. And in this presentation, I'd like to report these two feedback channels. Firstly, 
question and answers, that is, increase the number of questions and answers during the class hours. I ask them a lot of questions during the lecture hours and whenever I ask, some students will answer and I will use that answer to lead to the next point I want to explain. So uh, is one of the most cost-effective active learning tools because there is no special facilities uh, required for doing that. And the result of this increased Q&A during the class hours, uh, you can summarize this as a keyword engaging or interactive. If you come to our classes, you will see how engaging and how interactive the class hours are, even though the class size is very large. And our students feel that also. Mm, throughout the whole semester, mm, students constantly give a feedback to us that it is interactive, engaging, uh, and so on. So interactive, engaging, engaging. So I know it works and it is effective uh, and works in a large classroom if the purpose is to engage the students during the class hours. Secondly, it's a weekly journal entry uh, or reflection by students to be submitted to our uh, learning management uh, system. It can be a one sentence or one paragraph or even one word. Uh, the duration didn't matter, uh, but it was graded. And so this was effectively a mechanism for an increased uh, way of uh, communication between me and the students. It took about an hour and a half every week to go through all students' uh, entries. So it's a slight an effort for me to do, uh, but the benefit of it was uh, worthwhile because it allowed me to get, get the sense of how the class is going uh, and receiving this feedback individual basis. So it was definitely worthwhile and useful and it worked well in large classes. More details you can find in our paper. Thank you.